start with the big news out of the Eastern Conference yesterday. The Atlanta Hawks tied up this series in the Eastern Conference against the Milwaukee Bucks last night, 110-88. to Giannis leaves the game with a hyper-extended knee. And one of my favorite injury, uh, one of my favorite adages in sports is you're not as good, you're only as good as the team around you, as the guys that you have around you, right? A good team is never defined by just its singular great player. A team is defined by the guys that that is surrounding that great player. And when the great player goes down, how can those players around you step up? Last night, the Atlanta Hawks were without their one borderline all-star in Trey Young and a guy in Lou Williams who's 34 years old who ruptured his Achilles earlier in his career, who was on the verge of retiring prior to being traded to the Atlanta Hawks this year from the Clippers, was the leading scorer with 21 points on 7 for 9 shooting in 35 minutes. It was his first ever career start of his postseason career in 87 times as a three-time six-man of the year winner in Lou Williams. The Atlanta Hawks had six guys scoring double figures. Bogdan Bogdanovich was tremendous with 20 points. Kevin Herter with 15. Capella with 15. Cam Reddish with 10. They've got contributions from their entire team, even without Trey Young in the game. This was an Atlanta Hawks team that, in essence, beat a Milwaukee Bucks squad for five-eighths of the game. Because Giannis' injury didn't take place until midway through the third quarter. So the fact that it was already skewing in the favor of the Atlanta Hawks speaks to the depth of their team, which is incredibly impressive. But basketball is one of those sports where a star's presence can unite a group and an individual star's absence can lead to utter chaos and calamity and sometimes an implosion. And the latter is what happened with the Milwaukee Bucks. I'll touch on the injury aspect in a second, but when you think about how these teams are supposed to bounce back when your star player gets injured, Milwaukee Bucks had no answer. Giannis Antetokounmpo hyperextended his knee, and first of all, as a basketball fan and as a fan of the NBA, that was just a gut-wrenching, visceral, heartbreaking reaction and moment for someone that has poured in his life to be in this situation. He has had to overcome so much adversity coming from Greece, dealing with the psychological aspects of the game, the shortcomings that he's experienced. And now to see another star NBA player like Giannis, who's done everything right, who's approached the game perfectly from the right place, from the right point of view. Now he goes down. And I'm sending my thoughts and prayers out to him, but this was a 52 to 62 game. And the Milwaukee Bucks still had a great chance at winning this game. In essence, they had this game on a silver platter. Chris Middleton only drops in 16 points. Drew Holiday was good with 19 points, five rebounds, nine assists, but not great. Only 37 total points from the rest of the group. And so what I'm left taking away is let's think back to the Golden State Warriors when they were on that tremendous ride winning championships, especially in 2014, 2015, when they're really on the ascent. What was their mantra? Their mantra was strength in numbers. No question Steph Curry was the universal MVP of the league, was the best player on the team. But even when he got injured, you have Clay Thompson, great player, all-star, Draymond Green playing clutch, but it was the bench comprised of the Andre Iguodala's, Leandro, Barbo Leandro Barbosa, Sean Livingston, Festus Azili, Maurice Spates, the role players, Andrew Bogut, these guys, and Harrison Barnes, everyone chipped in. Ian Clark was on this team. Sometimes the bench would outscore the starters for the Warriors during those championship teams. That's what made them so formidable. No question, Steph was the MVP and the leader and the best player. But it was the depth of the team. How you're defined, a superstar's greatness is defined by the players around them. Now, it doesn't mean that superstars don't win series, because they do. 
And the old mantra and the old maxim in the NBA is stars win titles, role players win games, help you win games. So there's no question that there are times when your role players can win you a game, especially at home in the postseason. And that's what we saw with the Atlanta Hawks. And the Milwaukee Bucks are more of a star-studded team with Giannis, with Chris Middleton, and with Drew Holiday. The depth of the players and the teams favors to the Atlanta Hawks, and that's what showed yesterday. The Hawks team has been playing much better than the Milwaukee Bucks team. And that's what's what's noticeable. Pat Connaughton, Bryn Forbes, Brooke Lopez, P.J. Tucker. Those guys haven't been matching the production of the guys off the bench like the Danilo Gallinari, who also dropped in once again double digits for the Atlanta Hawks yesterday. So Chris Middleton, who's kind of been this, who's been less inconsistent than he's been in other postseasons, is still having one of those up and down games and up and down moments when the Milwaukee Bucks needed him to step up the most. Still his oscillating self and Drew Holiday, I love him. He played good, but up to his standards at his very best, that didn't match it. He could have played better. And so I actually had, now I want to taper some of my praise and some of what I admired about the Atlanta Hawks just a little bit because I had a heated conversation with someone, with a friend of mine yesterday about this, which is that I don't want to discredit or discount or devalue or diminish in any way this win for the Atlanta Hawks, or for that matter, all four teams reaching this spot and reaching the conference finals. But when you add Trey Young's injury and his unavailability yesterday, and Giannis Antetokounmpo's injury yesterday, and hopefully I'm praying that it isn't something too serious that he can come back from prayers up for him. But the reality is, when you add those guys to already a litany of injuries to star players in the NBA, it's getting very difficult, and we are creeping on this point of we may have to start adding an asterisk to the champion this year. And I don't like to do that. I don't want to do that. But the NBA champion this year, I understand it's always about a war of attrition. The NBA champion may be by default this year. It might just be by default with all these guys out, with all these guys unavailable to play. It just makes you step back and say, well, how can we really evaluate these teams? How can we really evaluate this matchup? This is not the Atlanta Hawks. If Trey Young and Giannis Antetokounmpo don't play game five, this isn't the Atlanta Hawks versus the Milwaukee Bucks. This is the Milwaukee Bucks versus the Atlanta Hawks. It's not the same. It's not the complete team versus the opposing complete team. And so I'll give credit to the Hawks again. They stepped up when they had to. Major win for them, tying up this series, and now they are one step closer to advancing to what would be one of the most improbable runs to an NBA Finals ever. Again, this is the farthest that this team has advanced in 50 years. But... You factor in Giannis's injury at in the middle of this game, and it, and it's hard not to be scarred by that a little bit, and it's hard to overlook the importance of yet another major player in the NBA going down. And I absolutely hate hate to see that. Such a shame to the game. Such a game. Such a shame to this spot in the Eastern Conference uh, Finals. Now, before I 